In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to give an I'm going to give an example of proof by contradiction. So we're going to try to validate this argument. And what we're going to do first is we're going to assume that uh, negation p of the conclusion p is going to be another premise. So this would be just another premise. So remember, these are premises. And no, p is our conclusion. So negated p would just be another one of our premises. So the objective now is to use these four premises that we have to try to get a, a contradiction. And when we what I mean try to get a contradiction, what we're trying to get is we're trying to get f o. So this is how we're gonna derive this. So let's start with the, our first premise. So this is our first step. Uh, this would be our first premise. And that is our premise. And we have used our first premise. So our second step is we're going to try to break that first premise down. And it's going to be broken down like so. Negated P implies Q. And Q implies negated P. So this is from step one. And this is from the rule that when we have a biconditional, we could break it down, it's pretty much logically equivalent to, um, and I'm going to write that down here because I don't think I have enough space, it's going to be logically equivalent to negated P implies Q, uh, and Q implies negated P. So we broke it down to this form from that rule. So then we have our third step, and our third step is negated p implies q. And this is taking step two and applying the rule of uh, conjunctive simplification. Conjunctive simplification. And this is one of those rules that simplification that I have not went through with you guys. And if we just take a look back to find it, it's this rule here, number seven. So going back to where we were, uh, we just applied conjunctive simplification to step two, on to step four. Now in step four, we're going to take care and use another one of our premises, which is Q implies R. And this would just be a premise. And our fifth step is, well, we have negated P implies Q, Q implies R. Well, that is pretty much just negated P implies R. And that is from the law of syllogism. And we know, or we are very familiar with that. I know that we are. And next we have negated P. And this one is the premise that we assumed. The premise that we assumed. So far, so good. So this is the premise that we assumed. And we have negated p implies r negated p from that we can use the rule of detachment or modus ponens to get r so modus ponens the eighth step is we're just gonna apply our last premise negated r this is our premise and nine we have for nine we have r and negated r. And we know that this is pretty much equivalent or logically equivalent to false. So that is one of our inverse laws from the laws of logic. So that's how we got our FO. So we so, so what I what we set out to do is we set out to use these four premises to derive a contradiction FO and we did derive a contradiction. F O. So 10, this implies P. And this is by using uh, negated P, uh, number 6, and 9 to, uh, to get P, and that is by the proof of contradiction. Proof of contradiction. And again, that is from one of our laws here. Negated P implies F O implies P. 
That is contradiction because we have our negated P and we have our FO. So what I want to do now is I want to explain what happened. So this is what we found in the end. We have our three premises in the beginning, which is like so. So that's our first premise. This is the second premise that I'm writing out right now. And negated R is our third premise. And we have our assumed premise, which is negated P. And what we found is that all this imply false. Now, because our first three premises were our given premises, they will have the truth value of true or one. Now, for this whole statement to be false, our p, our negated p, must be zero because one and one and one and zero, that is the only way to get a false statement because that will give us one and zero and that will be zero and that will pretty much logically implies zero. So for us to have that false, we figure that negated p has to have the truth value of zero. If that has to have the truth value of zero, then p must be one. So we found out that our previous statement, our original statement was true because all these given premises were one. They inferred or they implied one to get a tautology. So that validates our that's that validates our argument because we found that all these three premises were one and we found that the conclusion p was also one so that forms a tautology that forms the validation for our argument and that's kind of the example that i wanted to show you for proof by contradiction i know it's kind of tricky but uh, i'm sure that you'll get around to learning more about it and learning how to use contradiction to your advantage with the with the examples that you do as I as I mentioned you got to do more and more examples practice makes perfect here and you got to practice in order to get the hang of this uh, please rate comment subscribe if you haven't already follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook and I'll see you guys again next time.